In this video, we're going to make our own version of the memcopy function in C. We're going to do this to help us understand how C works better. Teachers will often ask this question as part of a class. We might also do this if we want to modify how memcopy works. Let's actually include string.h first, where the original memcopy function is defined. And we'll test it out in a bunch of scenarios where we know it should work. Then we'll try testing our function the exact same way. So let's test memcopy out by copying a string first. We'll say car source is equal to copy this and then car dest 100. And dest is going to be the car array where we're going to store the copy this string by copying it from source. We'll say memcopy dest source and then strlen source plus one. And this is how we call the memcopy function. The first argument is the destination memory address. The second argument is the source memory address. And the third argument is the number of bytes to copy from that source memory address to the destination memory address. The reason why we say strlen source plus one is that strlen is the string length function that also comes with the string.h library. It's gonna get the number of characters in the source string not including the special null terminator. We're adding one to account for that special null terminator. Now, characters take up one byte of memory. So we're just gonna say this many characters of the string plus that special null terminator is gonna give us the number of bytes that we need to copy from source to the destination. After this is done, we could print out the source and destination to see what we get. We'll say printf, source percent s backslash n for a new line and then source printf dest percent s backslash n and then dest for the destination string so we'll save this and try it out and we get source is copy this and the destination is copy this now one more thing that memcopy does is that it returns a pointer to, in other words, the memory address of the destination. So what we'll do is store that as well. We'll say car star dest pointer is equal to the return value of memcopy. If we print out the destination pointer and dest as a pointer, we're gonna find that they're the same value. Let's try that out though. We'll say printf that destination pointer percent p so as a pointer as a memory address and we'll say dest pointer and then we'll also print out dest as a pointer so dest percent p backslash n dest if we print out both these values we're going to find they're the exact same so we save this run it and they're both storing the same memory address but memcopy should do that as well so our version of memcopy is also going to have to do that. It's also going to have to return a pointer to that memory address of the destination. So there's actually a string copy function that comes with the string.h library as well. Memcopy is used for all kinds of things though. So for example, we could have an array of doubles. Let's try that. We'll say double source array five is equal to, and we'll put five double values in here. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, 4.4, and 5.5. And they'll make a destination array that's also able to store five doubles. Then we'll use memcopy to copy from the source to the destination array. So we'll say memcopy destination array source array. And this time here, we're going to say size of the source array. So size of will give us the number of bytes of the source array when we pass it in as an argument here. After that's done, let's try printing out the destination array elements to make sure the array values were copied successfully. So we'll say four int i is equal to zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. And for each element, we're gonna print out its value. We'll say dest array at percent d is equal to percent f backslash n We'll output i for the index and 
destination array at index i to output the value there. If we save this and run it, we're going to find the destination array contains those five values and memcopy was able to work with the double values as well. So memcopy is more general. It's intended for copying any block of memory really to any other block of memory. So for example, we could also use it with structs. So we'll make a struct. We'll say type def structs car name 256 int age double average and we'll say student here. So what we've done here is use type def and struct together to make a new type student. And student types are going to be a struct with three members, name, age, and average. And we can use memcopy to copy this sort of struct data as well. So we could say student, student one, and we'll just set some values for student one. We'll say string copy student one dot name, and we'll say psi, and then we'll say student one dot age is equal to 20, student one dot average is equal to 95.2. And then we'll use memcopy to copy student one into student two here. So we'll say here, memcopy and student two and student one, and then size of student. So we say size of student here because that's gonna give us the number of bytes to store a student struct. We have and student two here and and student one here because the first two arguments to memcopy need to be pointers. In other words, memory addresses. And and is gonna give us the memory address of student two and the memory address of student one. We didn't have to do that in the case of these arrays here because when we use array names like this, dest and source or dest array and source array, we're actually getting the memory address of that array. That's why here when we say dest and we have percent %p, we're printing out the memory address where the dest array is stored. So this should be enough test code. Let's just try to print out student two. We'll say printf name percent %s backslash n student two dot name and they'll print out their age. So age percent D backslash N, print out student two's age. And then finally, we're gonna print out their average. So average percent F backslash N, and we'll print out the student two average. We save this, we run it. And again, we see that memcopy works successfully. Now that's quite a bit of test code that we've written here, but that's because memcopy works in a bunch of different scenarios. It's a pretty diverse function like that. So our version also needs to work in all these different scenarios. Let's build our version of the function now. So it's going to look like this. We'll say void star mem underscore copy void star dest void star source and int n. So we've added this underscore here just to distinguish our memcopy function from the one that comes with the string.h library. Our function is also going to return a pointer to the destination, and it's going to accept three arguments. The pointer to the destination, the pointer to the source, and the number of bytes to copy from the source to the destination. And we have a void pointer here because this function is gonna accept a pointer to really anything in memory. So void is basically being used for that purpose, that it could be anything. So we'll copy this and paste it. And the actual function itself is going to look like this. The first thing we'll do is check if the dest pointer is null. If it is, we're just gonna return null as a bit of an error signal to handle that error in a more elegant way because we can't really do anything if the dest pointer is null. That could happen if the dynamic memory allocation failed for example. So somebody tried to allocate space on the heap, but it failed and therefore they're passing a null pointer to this function. In that case, we're just gonna return null. Now given that source and dest are both pointers and we have this number of bytes to copy, you might think we could create a loop 
and treat source and dest like arrays and just copy each element of source to each element of dest. It's not gonna work, but let's try that. We'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than n, i plus plus. And then we'll try to say dest at index i is equal to source at index i. And then finally, we're gonna return dest, the pointer to the destination. So we save this and run it, and we get an error. It says incomplete type void is not assignable. So we can't use void like this. If we wanna copy from source to destination, we're gonna to have to cast it. Now we wanna copy each byte from source to destination. And we know that a car is one byte. So if we casted source and dest to pointers to characters, we could then have a loop and we could copy each character from source to destination. And we know that each character is one byte, therefore going from index zero all the way up to n is gonna copy each byte from source to destination. So let's do that. We'll say car star car dest is equal to car star dest. And then car star car source is equal to car star source. So what we're doing here is creating two new pointer variables, car dest and car source. And we're casting the dest void pointer to a pointer to a character. And we do the same thing with source. So we can use car dest and car source with this array notation now. And we can copy each character from source to destination. So we'll say car underscore dest, car underscore source. And with the car type, we can do the assignment. So we can save this now and run it and it will compile. We now have to test out our version of the memcopy function. And we want our version of the memcopy function to have the exact same results as this in terms of copying the string, the double array, and the struct. So let's try out our version now. We'll just scroll up here and we'll just add that underscore here and here and here. And it should behave the exact same way. So we'll save it, run it, and we see that it works. We get the same string copy. We're getting back correctly the pointer to the destination. The double array is copying and the struct is also copying. So here we've created our own version of the memcopy function in C. We could then tweak it from here and specialize it for our purposes. But hopefully this has been helpful just as a learning exercise to learn more about C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.